welcome, welcome. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Eric Zane Show podcast. Uh, live from Fear Bunker North. Smack dab in the middle of rugged wilderness. Where, you know, the plan was 8 a.m. And I was ready. I was definitely ready. And, uh... Holy cow, the shit hit the fan today. My God. I can tell you that, uh, first of all, everything's okay. Everything's okay. Every, everyone is accounted for. Everybody's got their fingers and toes. Um, But, holy shit. This was, uh, you know, uh, easily one of the most anxious things that has ever happened to me. The, the, the amount, the level of fucking despair that I felt today, the helplessness. Oh man, this was so bad. So bad. Normal day. Well, as normal as it can be from, uh, from here in the middle of nowhere. And uh, last night I did a test of this equipment and everything was great. And I was excited because I was uh, going nighty night and uh, everything worked. And, uh, and, and, there, and, and it still works. That, that's not the problem. Um, I opened up the door to the motorhome. Wandered outside at um, 6.45 in the morning. Dogs have to go potty. And I have to feed them and all this stuff. But uh, I want this this room that I'm in right now to warm up a little bit. So I have this little heater. So uh, uh, I walk from the uh, motorhome 20 feet to here. Uh, O'Neill and Bruce are with me. I walk up the steps. I turn on the uh, heater. I turn around and I walk out. And I see Bruce. And I don't see O'Neill. And I go, oh, well, whatever. Time to eat, guys. Let's go. No O'Neal. I'm scanning. I'm looking. It's uh, The leaves aren't fully grown onto the trees yet. In fact, they're just barely sprouting here. And so I can see quite far into the woods. And I'm scanning. Of course, the uh, uh, forest bed is brown and so is O'Neill. So that makes things a little bit more challenging. He's got a white ass though. So it's almost, he almost looks like a deer out in the woods because of that white ass. So I'm like scanning. I don't see any O'Neill and I'm calling nothing, nothing, nothing. Very quickly. I start to realize we might have a problem as the seconds pass with no O'Neill. Put some dog food into the metal bowl. And put the other metal bowl on top of it, and I'm shaking it. That's that's the way you always get him to come back, and then he he always comes back. Well, I shouldn't say always. Uh, there was one other time when he took off, and I was lucky to find him then. If he sees anything in the woods, though, you know that's that's trouble. Um. So now it's it's one minute, and I'm I'm starting to get to like uh, like zero, completely calm. Ten, uh, sobbing hysterically. I'm at five, six. More time passes. I open up the app on the tracker. Uh, I I had enough sense to when we went outside, um, to turn them on, both of them, just in case. I open up the tracker and uh, I'm still kind of just getting used to how the thing works. But uh, I'm like, oh my God, this is ridiculous. So uh, I, I'm kind of like walking up the driveway. Now, this is terrible because um, if he does happen to go far, I don't uh, I don't ha- really have any any vehicle other than the 32 foot fucking motor home. And to go driving around, and um, it, it's literally like one road to drive on, and then it's fucking rugged, rugged territory. 
Uh, I walk up quarter mile up to the road that comes in here and it's just a dirt road. You know, there's, there's no one here. I am alone and I'm screaming his name and I'm, I'm shaking the food bowl. Nothing, nothing at all. Bruce is following me. Bruce starts to wander in the woods. I'm like, I can't lose him too. Okay. I got to lock him up. I got to lock him up in the trailer, in the camper, and then start this adventure. This fucking search party. And uh, I'm looking at the app, and it says he's in a particular area, uh, and it's updating. It's like last seen here. And we're in kind of like a weird zone, so, you know, they it's not perfect, the uh, tracker, because it's so isolated. There's not a lot of ways to, um, you know, sometimes the, the tracker doesn't pick up, I guess. Um, so... This is now many, many minutes. After I put Bruce into the trailer, I, I, I walk around more and I'm looking for him and I can't find him. So uh, I got I to gotta do something now. And, I, I, and there's a function on the app. You can press live. And then um, that's the most accurate way to find him. Otherwise, it's just updating every minute or so. And then it shows you where he's at. So um, I wander uh, way, way out into an area that I I've never been before. And, uh, it says that I'm like right where he was two minutes earlier and I'm, I'm yelling and I'm, I'm banging the, uh, 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 fucking uh, food bowl. And, uh, it's a tracker by the called, uh, tractive, like attractive tractive GPS is what's known as. And, uh, Oh, fuck, man, this is just, I, I'm, I'm panicking. Now, I'm at, I'm at seven and a half on the panic scale. Come back to the camper, unhook everything. So I have to unplug the camper, put the cords back in, push the sides in, lower the antenna. Now I'm driving. And uh, I'm driving, and uh, I, I hit the live button. And that's the most accurate thing. And then it catches. It, it catches where he's at. And it says, he's where you were, but further now. So, all right, so I back up the camper back uh, just barely out of my property. Get out, and uh, I- I'm fucking wandering for forever. And uh, I- I- I'm in an area I've never seen before. Picture um, if you ever saw the first season of True Detective when uh, Marty and Rust are are wandering into that area, and they, they find those kids that are locked up, and then uh, uh, Rust Cole ends up shooting the dude in the fucking head. I mean, it was, it's that fucked up. I, I'm passing all these deer blinds on people's property. And it, it's not the best thing in the world to be, uh, well, it's a horrible thing up here to be walking around on people's property. I've experienced this myself. Um, you are, uh, are, are treated even worse if you're walking on someone's property. If you're trespassing, that's as bad as child rape around here. Like, uh, if you go to uh, uh, in front of a judge for your sentencing for child rape in Crawford County, Michigan, the judge will go, all right, this is terrible. The only thing worse would be if you trespassed. I'm giving you 20 years. You're lucky you weren't trespassing. I'd have given you 100 years. Uh, and that's And that's on the light side of the punishment. If the person who owns a property finds you, they'll just shoot you. I've talked about this. If you if you happen to um, approach someone's property, you're supposed to yell from the fucking road. Hey, hey, so and so, can I can I walk on your property to say hi? You have permission. Jimmy says this is a great storyline for a horror movie. Eric, can I use it? Of course. At one point, I'm wandering, and I had some real Blair Witch vibes going on. Oh, shit. By the way, if you're watching this and it starts to lag, don't worry. It'll catch up. It's poverty internet. Um, I then... Now, I again, I have no one to help me. Um, 
Uh, Diana is aware of this. She's freaking out. I, I told her. I, I should never tell her, you know. I should just keep that a secret. But I, I had to talk to somebody. I was really fucked up. I, I'm still fucked up. Um, I get back in the camper. I wander out to the main road. I'm driving. And I, I, have, I have no idea. And I, the, the tracker is not picking up. And um, this is now one hour. That O'Neill's been gone. Never been gone this long before. By the way, um, failed to mention, because uh, folks are asking what uh, Darla the puppy thinks of Fear Bunker North. Um, last minute, uh, Diana said, no, 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 just bring Bruce and O'Neill. And because um, she's, she's watching. so And that's actually a good thing. Um, so I cannot, I cannot find the dog. And, um, I called this dude, Justin, the guy with the, uh, orange Silverado. I called him like, Hey, you know, anybody here who can, uh, who can help me? You know what, what, a, what a request, you know, I've, I've met the dude once and, uh, here I am begging for some type of assistance. Matt, the dude who lives up here, who plows the snow, uh, at the, on the property. I'm like, Matt, I need to, you get me your truck. I can't, I'm getting the kids off to school. Fuck. So it's just me. I, uh, as I'm driving back onto the property in the, uh, in the RV, um, a million things are going through my mind. Um, uh, this, this horrible panic of, uh, never seeing my dog again. It was stark and very, very real. Um, I'm, I'm having a, a full on anxiety attack where I'm sweating. My breathing is shallow. I can feel my heart uh, beating through my chest and, uh, I'm, I'm coming up the drive here and I'm going to call like the at the fucking dog pound or whatever. Like, like they're going to do anything, you know? I've never felt more helpless in my entire life. O'Neal was waiting for me right here. He came running to, as I'm driving up, and I could not believe my eyes. Slow down put it in park. He comes running up to the driver's side and I just, I just, I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually sobbing at this point. No, no lie. Like <laughs> so fucked up, dude. Oh, I couldn't believe how happy I was to see him. How relieved I was. I, I couldn't believe my eyes because I had, you know, Oh, and now, since he was back here, I find it difficult to believe that he was way over there on the opposite side and then came back. Um, and then, because it seemed like he was coming from the opposite side of where the tracker was. The question, the GPS trackers were a garbage investment, I take it. Yeah, I apparently, man. I, I mean... It spilled me out into a place where I honestly don't think he was over there. I there, there's I, I don't know how he would have been able to cover that much ground and then come all the way back and be waiting for me. It, it uh, has me convinced that he was like on the opposite side. Oh, shit, man. Um, so when I was driving, you know, like I hadn't really secured it. Normally when you move that fucking... RV, you got to make sure you got batten down the hatches. I didn't. I mean, I'm just fucking driving like a madman on a two track road and there's shit fly. Remember that scene in Breaking Bad when Walt fucking ditches the RV and the shit's flying, the lab's flying all over. That's what it was. I mean, it was fucked up. Um, as I'm driving this thing and um, there's a full fucking thing of, uh, of dog food that went flying off a shelf and there's dog food everywhere on the floor. 
and uh, it, 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 coffee maker flying. It was just fuck. I didn't care. Uh, yeah, I might have to, I might have to do some type. It's difficult with the trackers because, you know, the tracker, I think works fine when you're not in an area that is connected about as well as sub-Sahara Africa. Oh. I'm still rattled beyond belief. Could not believe it. (laughs) Chris writes, he could have stepped in a bear trap, could have been shot for food, fallen into a hillbilly Viet Cong spike pit. He's lucky to be back. Stevie says, meanwhile, the heater is still going on and going in the cabin. I actually turned it down. I stopped it. Can you test the tracker and see if it shows the wrong location? I'll I'll, I'll monkey with it a little later on. Um, Yeah. Hard to explain. Hard to explain. I don't know. Um, All I know is that he's back and I am just so happy. Just so happy. Relieved. Now, I wouldn't even say happy. I, I, I'm actually quite shell shocked after the turmoil that it caused. I mean, in an instant, that fucker was gone. Um. So, all right. I get. I get back here. Uh, I. I think I uh, announced right around nine o'clock that um I would be starting the show or. I think I, I think at eight I announced that I'd be starting it in like an hour, and that was impossible. Um, after I did the chores that I was planning to do, I had to reset up everything, um, and then feed the dogs, and then uh, O'Neill wanted to go outside. I put that fucker on a leash. It's like there is no fucking way I'm letting you out of my sight. We have got to come up with something. The line from Kenny, you know, O'Neill's brain was like, oh my God, I can totally sneak off right now and go look for some random poop to consume. Zoom, zoom. Shit. Uh, I investigated for ticks. Oh. So here we are. Here we are. The day can only get better. Maybe. Um. So then uh, after I'm getting my shit together, I, I, I go, I got to make my coffee. This is already, I'm already experiencing the withdrawals of no coffee consumption. I have a headache. Uh, and uh, I put the thing on. Then I go over to the other part of the camper. I'm getting something. Coffee's brewing. I come back and I forgot to put the fucking cup underneath the thing. So it's everywhere. I'm like, what the fuck? I didn't freak though. That uh, you know, um, outside of openly weeping when I saw my my best boy. Now that okay, out of all the dogs that I have ever had, you got to understand, this is my soul buddy. I love them all so much, but O'Neill is the closest thing next to my immediate family. Like if someone uh, said, okay, you must choose uh, this family member or O'Neill. So if it was uh, my kids or my wife or my grandkids or their significant others or well, maybe or O'Neill, what would you do? It would, you know, I, I would do the right thing, but anything beyond that, dead, dead humans, O'Neill all fucking day. No way. Not even close. Fuck you. Oh,
I couldn't believe it. When I was driving up and I see his ears and he's running, I'm like, hey, where you been? You won't believe what I found. I'm like, oh my God. Oh, shit, man. Oh, oh. Come here. Come here. I couldn't even be mad at him. I was too happy to see him. Come on. And I'm like holding onto his collar really tight just in case he thinks about bolting again. Come on, you big guy. Come on, you. And there's still food all over the floor of the camper. So he's like, whoa, candy land. And I'm like, no, don't eat that. That's all the food we got, you fucker. Oh. Dudes. Oh. Rough start. Okay, that's it. That is it in a nutshell. After I got my wits, it was going to be a great story to start this show. Oh, shit. My God. So here we are in beautiful Fear Bunker North. Thank you for being with me. Um, enjoying the podcast. Better late than never. But uh, off we go on another amazing week of the Eric Zane Show podcast. <sighs> breathe, breathe, breathe. Um, apologies again for the, um, if there's any lag going on or if any weirdness that's, uh, uh, messing with the, uh, the feed, if it craps out, I'm sorry. If you're getting the show on Facebook or Twitter or YouTube, I'm going to send you on your way, the full show uninterrupted. And there's a lot more that I have to cover. Um, about another hour and 40 minutes worth. My God. Um, it's on Twitch. I don't know anything about Twitch. No, it's really easy. You can either download the Twitch app on your mobile device. Very simple. And then after you get it, uh, create your little usernames. You can, uh, uh, integrate yourselves with all the uh, regulars that are on here and get to know them, have some fun chit chatting about the show, whatever. Um, after you do that, hit the follow button. Uh, and a- after you find, er- yo, I'm sorry, I- I- let me back up. Um, go to Eric Zane Live after you download the app. All one word, Eric Zane Live, and then follow. Or if you're on a laptop or desktop, you know, that old school way, just go to twitch.tv slash Eric Zane Live. But most people do it via the mobile app, and that's cool. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Follow me on Facebook, facebook.com slash Eric Zane fan page. I post stuff up uh, there all the time, including a lot of ticket giveaways lately. Uh, Twitter, at Eric Zane Show. And, um, of course, follow me on YouTube as well. The audio podcast is made available right after it gets. W- I get done with this, and I take the audio podcast, put it on all the podcasting platforms. You can listen uh, whenever you want. Uh, Twitch also has on-demand video, too. If you want to get the live experience with the video, because a lot of the things I talk about on the show, I might like share a screen with you and then you can see what the hell is up today is like that with some incredible video. Uh, I'll get to that in a second, but um, yeah. And of course, if you ever want to say hello, reach out Eric at Eric Zane I love the email. I love corresponding. Um, it's been a little bit of a, been getting a little action on the subreddit, the Eric Zane show podcast subreddit. Um, if you want that, you go to, uh, my subreddit is just the Eric Zane show, the Eric Zane show, all one word, uh, follow me on there. It, it's not, it's not that active at all. It's just not a lot of people that are, I was only 421 people following it. Um, but I, I love interacting on it. Um, there's been a lot of buzz, not, not a buzz. There's been uh, not a lot of buzz. There's been a few people who uh, just recently kind of got on board with the show or at least trying it out, who are frustrated with my pals over at Free Beer and Hot Wings. Um, Thank you. I saw that there was some conversations on... I I lurk on their subreddit all the time. I'm not allowed to post. Funny story today or yesterday. Um, There was a lot of people that were frustrated with them because they didn't uh, post a uh, Free Beer and Hot Wings show. And so people are pissed off on their subreddit and complaining. And then someone drops the, Hey, you got to try Eric, Eric show. And there's been a few people on there and Aram was one of them, Aram in Nashville. And, um, Aram was, uh, and you know, he was kind of like just jumping in on all the fun. Cause a lot of people were bitching about, um, what's going on on their show. 
And I was just kind of watching all this because I can't post on it. They won't let me. I got banned because I was being a troll. So, but, you know, various, Patrick was on there, Aaron was on there, and there was a couple other folks who were posting um, about my show. And Aaron was just like, oh, yeah, man, I, 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 it really bums me out because I like pre beer and hot wings. And he, I mean, he likes both shows or liked. Um, he especially likes the old stuff, the pre beer and hot wings stuff that they post, which is really old material with me on it. Well, they uh, banned him on the thing. And he, he told me, and I go, oh, Jesus, because they, they banned him because they think it's me. That it that I uh, uh, created another account and was posting, but it, it was, and I, I have done that, but I'm, I haven't done it. I wasn't doing it this time, and I haven't done it in a long time. Um, so I actually know the guy who runs the site. I go, hey, uh, this is not me, uh, and I, I sent him a couple screenshots to prove it, and uh, he brought Aaron back, but. It's not like Aram was the only guy bitching on there, Gee, and it's and Aram is always so polite in his in his uh, in his bitching. It's always very very nice. Uh, Kenny is uh, talking about he didn't get a Twitch notification. Yeah, you know what? I I'm pretty sure that if you experience anything different, um, it uh, what 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 what's gonna happen? is um is because of the uh you know because I'm up here that's why I think that um maybe you didn't get a twitch a twitch uh notification all right uh where was I okay so I'm gonna kick you all out and then I got uh, I got a whole lot more to talk about Twitch folks, you stay right there. Twitch and Facebook brought to you by Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid, and EV. Twitter brought to you by Blue Frost IT. You can follow me on both of those. I appreciate the support. That's just another one of those free things you can do that uh, helps, helps me out. Uh, if you listen to the audio podcast, please subscribe and uh, rate it and review it if uh, your platform allows you that option. All right. Where the fuck was I? Okay, so I I get in here last night, and um, there's always a little bit of trepidation when I come into this old trailer. It's been a uh, since uh, since I started coming here, I've been telling you about uh, the war on the mice. And uh, opening this place up after a winter is sometimes, you know, you never know what you're going to get when you walk in here. So um, first thing I want to do is that check. So I come in here and I look and all of the all of the uh, traps that I'd set up, the uh, mouse traps, they're all sprung. But no mice in them. Oh, my God, that's weird. And there isn't even like resembling... Uh, a, you know, sometimes it'll spring, and then if uh, enough time passes, the mouse actually disappears. Like it's consumed. It, that's happened. There'll be just like a little bit of fur left over, but nothing. It was, wasn't was a mouse in sight. Um, there was a couple spots where there was a little bit of mouse poop here and there, but no big deal. And I'm like, you know what? This is uh, kind of a mystery. Um, all the traps to be sprung. No mice, not a lot of activity in here, evidence that they've been in here. So I was uh, counting that as a win. I have to report to the queen of the forest about the mice because I've been trying for years now to convince her that it's okay to sleep in this place. And, uh, She's not having it. So if I can call her up and say, hey, I have no mice. A couple turds here and there, but no big deal. You know, she's part hillbilly. I'm figuring she can uh, let that go. Thank you to I am KO. 
for just subscribing on Prime. Uh, Kenny says, but you slept in the RV, correct? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's easiest that way because I got shit all in here. I have slept in here before. No big deal. Um, all right. So I'm on the phone with her in an area that you can't see right now over in this little kitchen area that we have. And uh, she goes, Are there any mice? I go, no. Um, no, actually, it's I haven't been able to find anything. A couple, and then uh, I'm like opening cupboards and things like that. And uh, there's this this one set of small cupboards just above this really old refrigerator. Um, all original equipment. This is all um, 70 plus year old equipment. It works. All works. Everything works. And I open up this cabinet and um, the mice have used the inside of the cabinet door which serves as a wall until I open it as um, where they want to pile all of the uh, nest material. So imagine the opening of this cabinet is 18 inches by 14 inches. I open up the cabinet and there's a wall of shredded uh, 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 nest material 18 inches wide by 14 inches high. It's a proverbial uh, mouse hotel. It's enormous. It's a nest like you wouldn't fucking believe. And I go, oh, oh this is a big one. This, I have ne- I've seen a lot of nests in this place. I have never seen a fucking ne- uh, mouse high rise. I open up that fucking thing and I'm like, uh, what the fuck am I going to do with this? And then I'm concerned that the mice are still in it. Turns out they were not. But I don't know that at the time. So one at a time, I got gloves on. One at a time, I'm like slowly removing some of the other contents in that fucking cabinet and setting it down. And you know, I'm going to end up burning everything because this is covered with mouse piss now. And, uh, oh, dude, and I, I slowly removed the nest and put it into, like, a, a garbage can and took it outside. It's in the fire pit right now. You wouldn't believe it. I had a bunch of, like, uh, curtains that were up there. These windows used to have curtains. Now, I was planning on uh, replacing them, but for some reason, I left them up there. I don't know why. They shredded the curtains to make, like, a fucking tempur mouse mattress. The curtains are gone. They're, they, they've been shredded. It's an unbelievable effort on their part. My God. So, um, slowly get all the shit out. Uh, get, uh, get on a little step stool and vacuum the inside of that. And uh, I made the mistake... See, I'm on the phone with Diana when I opened up that cabinet. And so as I'm talking, I open it and I go, whoa. And she right away, she's that got like a sixth sense. She knew something was up. She goes, what? I go, nothing. And she goes, bullshit. What? And I go, oh, fuck. And I'm not going to lie to her. I go, uh, I found an unbelievable structure. Uh, it, it's absolutely enormous. I'm an idiot. I should have taken a picture of it. Uh, I, I got, I was so fucking nervous though about what I was seeing. I just slowly got it out of there and didn't even bother. I was just fucking disgusted. Jesus. I, I, I feel defeated. Okay. I really do because I want to be like in this place. I wa- I love this place. I've been here s- for as long as I've been alive. And so have the mice. So I am uh I don't know. I'm at a loss. Um in fact, as the uh today's events went on, I was uh I had to uh, I was looking for a screwdriver and there's another drawer here. In fact, I'm going to go get this. 
don't move. Um, I opened up a drawer and, and I saw something that, that just kind of added uh, injury to the insult or insult to the injury. Don't move. I'll be right back. All right. Uh, okay, I'm going to grab this thing. It's a little, little show and tell, so bear with me. This is a drawer that I was, t- I was looking for a screwdriver. Now, in it, you got a cookbook right here and a mouse nest. Look at, uh, this appears to be some type of like uh, paper towel, all sorts of leaves. There's, there's a, uh, um, th- they like got little nuts and opened the nuts and they were having a party in here. Um, this is a uh, paint swatch. You know how like you uh, go to the store and you want to pick out the paint that you want. This is a paint color that I wanted. This and this, up oh, shit, and the green. So they came in here and fucking laid waste. And this is uh one this is the second nest I found. Can you believe this shit? Hang on. I got to go put this outside. I don't even want it in the house. What a shit show. What an absolute shit show. Ryan says these super mice have evolved and are now engaging, now engineering high-rise structures and are selling real estate to one another. <laughs> Maureen sees me on the video and she says, look at you wearing pants. Yes. Uh, truth be told, I got a call three miles from home when I started my adventure yesterday. When I ran into Meg, uh, Megan at Meyer. she goes, you forgot your sweats. I'm like, oh, No. Fuck, I should have known. It was a bad omen, you know? It's a bad start. Uh, hang on. One of my uh, backdrops just fell. And I got it. It's killing me. Uh, the last time I did the show here, I didn't have uh, anything hanging over the uh, the windows there. And it, it I, I might as well not have done any video because... You couldn't even see me. I was so poorly uh, lit. The, the backlighting was so fucking intense. Ah. Okay. So that is the latest. Ryan says, I love that you're doing this. Really makes Howard Stern taking his show to Miami last week look like shit. Really? He did. Good for him. The whole show. Yeah, uh, I'm the only one on my show. Okay. So uh, Diana said, well, I don't know what we're going to do. If we have people up there and you expect me to stay in that place, you're fucking crazy. And uh, I don't don't blame her. I don't blame her. I don't know what I'm going to do. Back to the drawing board, I guess. Okay. We are off and running better late than never with the Eric Zane show podcast. Uh, so, you know, every day I do the free podcast and then Patreon. Patreon is going to happen. Of course, today, the Patreon bonus podcast I do after this one. And then uh, all of the other content that I post up there, I posted a uh, edition of the Ben. I'm sorry. The, who are these Zane show with guest roaster Ryan? That was a big hit. I had a fantastic time doing that. It was just neat that uh, Ryan pulled his own clips. Thank you. I got to break the news to Ben that I need him to do that too. Uh, Part of what you get when you sign up for Patreon. Work very, very hard on it, and I'm proud of it. So I would love it if you would consider signing up for ad-free, listener-supported Patreon. I suggest just one month. Sign up for one month, patreon.com slash Eric Zane. Hell, just do it for the audio. Don't even worry about the fucking video. That's 10 bucks a month. Throw five bucks a month at it for just one month. Oh, shit. Hold on. Another one of my backdrops fell. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. I'm on a a roll today where if anything goes wrong outside of getting shot, uh, it'll be just like, uh, whatever. I don't care. Easy going. Uh, if you like the free podcast, if you would think about the Patreon, um, you know, some of you are like, well, I will, I'll never listen to it. And that, that's totally fine. I, I get it. But if you like the show and you just want to help out and you need more content, 
That's the way to go. So it's real simple. Sign up for one month. After you sign up, cancel it. And I know that that sounds weird, but what that does is you'll get the whole month because you already paid for it. It just will not renew on you. I don't want you to get stuck with that because you forgot to cancel it. And it's real easy to cancel. Just click a button. Um, So sign up, cancel, enjoy. And then when the month ends, if you're like, yeah, you know what? I liked it. It was, it was cool. I got a lot out of it. Then sign up again. But if you do sign up again, rather than just going month to month where it just auto renews on you, if you sign up for a whole year, I'll take 10% uh, off. So if it's 60 bucks for a year for all the audio, it's 54. If you sign up for audio, video, live streams, which is also very fun, it's 120. And then uh, I'll with the 10% off, it's 108. So there you go. Patreon.com slash Eric Zane. Uh, if you want some more content, there you go. Today's open and live stream uh, brought to you by... Oh, fuck. Hang on. Another backdrop fell. Um, Sarah Honda Granville. That's where you go to get a brand new Honda vehicle. S-E-R-R-A. Sarah Honda Granville.com. Uh, Test drive a brand new Honda today. They're on Kennewa, just north of 44th, next to the Cracker Barrel. SarahHondaGranville.com. They also have a uh, fine selection of certified pre-owned vehicles. SarahHondaGranville.com. Mention me when you go. Ryan writes, their first, Aram says, uh, hey, Ryan, great job on who are these Zanes, by the way. Really appreciate you doing that. Those jerks were real a-holes to the old people, uh, especially the guy who sang Empty Pockets. God, I, I hated me on that show. Ryan adds, ha ha, I enjoyed doing it. It's pretty impressive how that show consisted of host Billy and Zane calling old people and roasting them for no apparent reason. Let's hope poor Ola is resting in peace She might still be alive, Ryan. Thank you to TC Paintball. Online at tcpaintballgr.com. If uh, you want to book an event, get a hold of my friends at TC Paintball. Check out their website, tcpaintballgr.com, and uh, take care of that. So, yeah, I got 10 people that want to play. You just show up, man. One price. You get the gun. You get the paint. You get the mask. If you want to upgrade, maybe you want to wear some protection. That's fine. I, I prefer no protection. Um, to me, it's it's uh, you, you got to finish that uh, that that uh, match with a couple of welts to show off to your friends. Hurt uh, hurts like fuck for about five seconds. And then it's like, oh, shit. Pain quickly subsides. Thank you. TC Paintball. TC Paintball. GR dot com. Got a carpet outlet. Johnson Carpet One discount outlet. Absolutely fantastic. The lowest price for flooring anywhere in uh, in Michigan. So, you know, I mean, obviously, if you live uh, 200 miles away, you're not going to go to Johnson Carpet One Discount Outlet. But if you're in the area, for God's sake, do make that a destination to pick up your stuff. And they got it all there. It's not like you got to go there and order it. Um, they have such a wide selection of every type of flooring available. You're going to drive there. You're going to say, wow, this looks great. And you're going to take it home. So make sure you got a vehicle that can uh, get at home. Johnson Carpet One Discount Outlet. Lowest price for flooring anywhere. Guaranteed. And, and, if you mention my name, you take an additional 10% off of the cost. Johnson Carpet One Discount Outlet. All right. Um, uh, Speaking of dogs, O'Neal, I... This, uh, I I wrote this down. I wasn't sure what it was. And I just reminded myself. Um, so Friday, um, Friday comes do the show. I had, uh, what did I do Friday? I'm not even sure, but anyway, we go to bed and, uh, you know, it's, it's now three dogs on the bed. You got O'Neal, who's a giant. Well, he's the biggest of the dogs. You got Bruce takes up a little bit of room and then Darla. Well, um, about two in the morning, O'Neal gets down and he woke me up when he did it. And I was like, oh, what the fuck is up with that? And then, um, he got back on the bed and he seemed a little restless. 
And then Darla, she got a little restless too. So I said, well, you know what? I'm just going to get up and take these dogs out. So uh, I got Darla. I said, come on, O'Neal, let's go. And he uh, he had to go. It was, it was uh, something was up. I'm not sure. So I was like, well, thank God I, I did that. I don't want to be uncomfortable. So, uh, but it was so bright, by the way, it was a, a full ass moon. And, um, I mean, it was casting the, uh, starkest shadows. I couldn't believe how crisp the moonlit shadows were. It was really fucking, uh, uh, creepy. An odd type of, uh, um, uh, light being cast on the earth from the moon. It's just intense. Uh, dogs. Take care of their business. Go back in there. And then uh, I'm in bed and I'm like, "Uh uh-oh. And I I smell something. And and I I was under the impression that O'Neal had um, a little bit of uh, residual uh, used food somehow clinging to his body. So I go, I can't. You know, this is ridiculous. So I get up and uh, I get some paper towels and I help him out. I know. Sounds weird. Uh. And, but there was, there was nothing. And, and, and when I, when I did what I'm supposed to do, uh, you know, you, you look at the paper towel and there's, there's nothing like ah, that's weird. Well, maybe he stepped in some shit. I don't know. So yeah, I check him out. Nothing. That would be a bummer if he was on the bed with shit on his paws. You know, can you imagine? Oh, fuck. Fall asleep. Saturday comes. Morning comes after night. Great song by uh, Robert uh, Robert Bradley. Wander down, do my normal thing, get my coffee. Uh, I got actually had to go upstairs to um, put the finishing touches on who are these Zanes and publish it. I walk through my bedroom. I walk through the closet. The other end of it is the studio door. As I'm in the closet, I started to detect trouble. With each step, the troubles intensify. I'm now in my studio. I'm looking around. Nothing. I walk. So if you can picture where I am when I'm doing my show, where the camera is, I wandered over to that area. And I have a, a literally a, a a box full of who are these Zanes tapes, a couple of which are actually the cassettes are on the carpeting. I must have been rummaging through it or something. The feces is dropped. It well, it didn't get on any like tapes or anything. Can you imagine if I put a fucking cassette tape with feces on it into the player unknowingly? Jesus. Uh, explain that one. Um, and I realized that I've got a full on red alert. O'Neill must have been had an upset stomach. And uh, hang on, I got another bit of show and tell. Don't go anywhere. I just happen to have a similar contraption right here in front of me that will um, illustrate what I had to do. Um, the, uh, of all, it was a lot of material on the ground and, uh, very little of it was solid. So I'm like, uh, fuck. Now I can only tell you that if you do not own a Bissell, uh, carpet cleaner, I've talked to you about this before and you have a pet. Even if you don't have a pet, if you spill wine or something or something that's like, I don't know, uh, it's going to fuck up your carpet. You must own one of these. Um, now, I can't just put the carpet cleaner on the shit. I have to get as much of the shit up as possible. And I needed uh, two of these. This uh, is, if you, you know, if you are watching, you can obviously see it. Uh, but this is uh, one of those things you use to put like spackle on the wall or joint compound when you're fixing holes in your wall. The, you scrape the thing, you know. I got this one just like this and a wide one. 
and I swear to fuck that I would put the wide one and use the other one and and I, I, I'm, I'm scooping it onto there and actually taking the smaller one and and it's just like mudding but mudding with shit uh, Stevie says this is called a putty knife so I'm, I'm mudding like crazy and uh with shit on there and then uh fucking it's awful i get all of this done and uh I then go get the carpet cleaner and and take care of business so this was uh this is a lot this is a lot and uh i th- one, now i have a very very strong stomach when it comes to this but i almost barfed the intensity of this was nutty. Uh, hang on. I got to send a text. Uh, I just got a text from a family member. My uh, sister, Sue. Oh, thank God. I tell you what. During when I was just putting up that uh, using the duct tape there, I was in a panic because I got, hey, can you give me a call when you get a chance? Thanks. And I said, yep, in the middle of something right now. Is it an emergency? And I'm waiting to see yes, which would just be, it would be really bad news. Something bad would have happened with my mother, with my stepmother and my father. No, not an emergency. Just talking about grailing. Thank God. God damn it. I can't take it today. I tell you what. Um, So anyway, I I, I cleaned all that and it worked out great. But uh, I, I was, it was bad. It was really, really bad. Poor guy. He was so fucked up. He had to go take a shit in my studio. And that is so not like him. I was like, oh, you poor guy. Jesus. Fuck. Who knew that that would just be the start of my problems with my pal O'Neal? You know? Damn it. Uh, Aram says that's the same tool he has to use on the cabinets, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So true. So true. By the way, this mic sounds really good in here. I don't know what it is. I think for some reason when I'm in my studio, it's more echoey. But I'm getting a uh, I'm getting a real good sound on it. I don't know if I have uh, changed the uh, settings or what. I don't know what the fuck is going on. Sorry. Okay. So that's shit fest. Speaking of shit fest. Uh, We need to get into the uh, baseball announcer. The name is Glenn Kuyper. You've never heard of him. Uh, Of all the times that we've heard announcers say crazy shit that they end up getting him fired. Uh, This one is just the biggest head scratcher ever. He is the announcer for the Oakland A's TV uh, TV broadcast, and he does the game with some dude. I don't know who the fuck this guy is. Tyler says this is the worst announcer gaffe ever, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Um, the, the guy without the stupid beard is the one that's going to say it. The guy with the fucking beard and the stupid hat After this is said, you would think there would be some type of reaction. Now, you're going to hear a hard R N word. All right. A hard R N word with no stumbles, nothing. I wanted to say that ahead of time in case you're in an area that is sensitive. I don't want this to fuck you up or get you in trouble. Fuck. I don't want it to get me in trouble. Here we go. We had a phenomenal day today. Nigger League Museum and Arthur Bryant's Barbecue. We had. In Missouri, they have the Negro League Baseball Museum. And he said that. We had a phenomenal day today. Nigger League Museum and Arthur Bryant's Barbecue. Now, I've watched this a million times and focused on their face because 
you know, if you drop that, you're going to go, you're going to, you're going to make some reaction. You're going to, and neither of them, if I'm the person saying it, you, you catch it immediately. If you're the person who hears it, like the dork with the beard and the stupid hat, you, you hear what the guy said. We had a fun. Just, okay. Let's just watch the guy who says it. Keep your eye on him. Phenomenal day today. Nigger League Museum and Arthur Bryant's Barbecue. We- now let's watch Stupid Beard Guy. We had a phenomenal day today. Nigger League Museum and Arthur Bryant's Barbecue. Oh. Okay, I'm not going to play it anymore. Um, what the fuck? First of all, if that were me, let's say I'm the announcer. I, I, I drop the mic and um, behind me is like the open air of the stadium. I just jump out of it. I just, just fall. Or if I'm the guy, if I'm the guy who heard it, like, let's say I'm stupid beard guy. Which by the way, just looks like shit. I'm sorry. You look like a fucking cartoon character. Shave your fucking face. Kenny says, not a flinch, didn't bat an eye. Maureen says, who does that? (laughs) Fucking shit. You know, if you're the guy, if you're the other dude. Um, By the way, Kenny says he looks like Sam the Jew. (laughs) That's true, he does. If you're a stupid beard guy, you go, you realize he's just dropped the hard R. At this point, to avoid you being implicated in any way, you need to uh, disavow. You need to say, oh, wait a minute. Uh, I don't know if you know what you just said, but do you know But do you know what you just said? And if he says no, say, well, you just said the most horrible thing you can possibly say. And... I, I don't know where to go from here. I don't. In fact, uh, I he should just say, fuck you. Fuck you, you filthy racist. The only uh, the only way you could have possibly have said that is if you actually intended to say it. <laughs> Nate with I'm surprised Nick Castellanos didn't hit a home run right then. It would have been per- Castellanos is involved and in every every time something fucked up happens. In fact, he was involved in something fucked up over the weekend. The, that fucking guy fell out of the stands at the Phillies ballpark. And uh, he landed in the bullpen. He's all fucked up. And uh, they, they actually put the camera on Castellanos. Holy shit. Oh, dude. This isn't over. After he dropped that. Uh, Tyler says, uh, I'm surprised he wasn't pulled immediately from the broadcast like F rhymes with bag announcer, which was just incredible. I forgot that guy's name, but that was, um, this makes that look like a fucking picnic. Uh, as the game was going on though, um, a little bit more to this. Okay, where the fuck is it now? Okay. Uh, as the game was going on, it was uh, the dude, this Glenn Kuyper. Someone said, hey, uh, dude, do you do you realize what you just uh, said? And uh, I guess they played the proof to him or something, and then he realized he had to say something. Uh, E-Rock said it sounded like something Brock Meyer would say. Audio check, video check. This is the apology. Uh oh. This is to Coffin. Welcome back to Coffin Stadium. I just wanted to, a little bit earlier in the show, I said something didn't come out quite the way I wanted it to, <laughs> um, and I just wanted to apologize if if it uh, <laughs> if it sounded different than <laughs> I meant it to be said. And, said i just wanted to apologize for that loriano is the hitter he- oh! 
Let's see if no. they can capitalize here. Oh my god! No! What? Oh no, I look, I, I don't I don't know if there's a there there's no manual for this. There's no way to Oh my fucking lord. Oh Chris says they had to play it back for him like freaking Ron Burgundy. Od Odin's Raven. What did Burgundy say? Oh, Hammer of Thor. Beard of Odin. Oh, shit. Notice stupid beard guy wasn't there when he did the apology. I got to see the apology again. Fuck. Oh, my God. To Coffin, welcome back to Coffin Stadium. I just wanted to, a little bit earlier in the show, I said something didn't come out quite the way I wanted it to. Didn't come out quite the way you wanted it to? Um, Yeah, I don't know if, okay. I, In the heat of the moment, I wouldn't be able to make the right decision about what to do. But now that we've had the benefit of uh, hindsight, uh, at this point, he should say, ladies and gentlemen, I said the N-word earlier, and I did not mean to do that. But I know that I cannot live anymore, so uh, this is the end of my life. And then pull out a pistol and shoot himself right in the mouth. That is the only thing that is acceptable. Um, and I just wanted to apologize if if it uh, if it sounded different than if it sounded different. <laughs> I meant it to be said. I said I just wanted to apologize for that. What a fucking idiot! Okay. Now, I, in my heart of hearts, do not believe. Excuse me. Probably a mouse hair in my mouth. <laughs> um, what the fuck is that? I did not believe that. Um, I do not believe that that was intentional. But now you have the speculation because various people are like. Uh, he uses that all the time. That's why he said it. He's so used to saying it. I don't believe that either. I just believe it It was some fucking fucked up glitch in the matrix, I guess. Oh. Uh, that That's what Maureen indicates. She says, dumb fuck. He said it like that because that's the way he says it off the air. It's too crazy to believe that and just that whole idea of no reaction from either of them what what is going on here now this is what i think um you do all right uh some people are wondering what the hell and Chris clarifies, he said Negro League Museum, but with the bad N-word. For those who aren't. Uh, uh, various excuses flying. It wasn't me. Someone hacked the broadcast with an AI voice. That would be more believable than uh, what actually happened. I act, I'm, I'm going to play it again in case you missed it. Because I'm getting the idea that not everybody heard it. And, and I, I actually don't like playing it because it is so intensely horrible. Uh, audio check, video check. This is it again. We had a phenomenal day today. Nigger League Museum and Arthur Bryant's Barbecue. Oh. We had a phenomenal day today. He's nodding for the N-word League Museum. Nigger League Museum and Arthur Bryant's Barbecue. Oh. We okay. It's 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 no stumbling over it. It's no. What did I just say? Uh, nothing. Oh. So this is where I stand on this. 
if I am in charge of the broadcast or the Oakland A's, even if he passes a lie detector, there is no way this guy can broadcast. I don't give a fuck how much of an accident that was. If someone makes that much of an accident, is that much of a butt fuck? Um, You don't want them around. Okay? So if you have a business, and let's say I'm at Bosco's, and, uh, you know, I keep fucking everything up. I I destroy the burgers. I drop it on the floor. I I start to cry. I put the... uh, uh, fuck, I, the, the fries are undercooked, the meat's raw, the chicken's raw, everything's fucked. I'm going to get fired because of my ineptness. This guy, he has the most extreme ineptness. I don't give a fuck how long he's been doing this. This guy is so fired. That's at best. Make fun of someone's dead grandma, which did happen. Uh, Maureen says, but Eric, if it was a mistake, he would have stopped horrified, kind of like what I did. He'd have been mortified. Clearly, he wasn't. Uh, yes, you're right. Um, but you got to realize he then it would have been okay. I am intentionally going to just say this word just to destroy my career. Throw away his entire livelihood. He's going to be he's a, he's going to be making fries at Bosco's if he's lucky for his next job. There is no way he will be able to have any job even remotely close to uh, to what he had done. That's what you're saying he did. My God. Wow. Now, when the last guy did it, when the dude said uh, the F rhymes with bag capital of the world or whatever, that was not a slip of the tongue. That was a malicious thing. I do believe that this was a slip of the tongue. But he should never be near a microphone. He should be absolutely fucking fired. There's too much at stake here. You know? Chris says it uh, agrees mistake or not. You cannot afford the risk of him making that mistake again. That's the one Tom Brenneman. The F rhymes uh, with bad guy. Oh, he's still doing baseball, but in like the Kenny powers league or some shit. He wants back. No, you're never coming back. The fact that Tom Brenneman is still doing any game is a miracle. Um, this guy who said it, Glenn Kuyper is getting some support. Tyler adds that Tom Brenneman is so happy that this happened to this guy. Oh God. Yeah. Um, to me, it, uh, the, the saying of the word, it wasn't smished at all. It wasn't, he didn't stumble through it. He powerfully and emphatically and slowly took his time while pumping his fist about going to that Hall of Fame and said that word with no flinch whatsoever. I don't think, I mean, I believe that it was a slip, but I think it's absolutely acceptable to believe that it was not a slip. If any person on the planet believes that that was not a slip and intentionally done, I do not fucking blame them. To me, they're both gone because shithead beard guy, the Sam the Jew guy, uh, he's loving it. He thought it was was awesome, that that uh, N-word Hall of Fame. And uh, everybody's like, fucking, oh my God, it was just like this guy. He writes... Uh, For all of you cancel culture warriors, every damn one of you has made a similar mistake. Admit it. Uh, First of all, there is no similar mistake. It's we're looking at that mistake. This is the big one. This is the world war three mistake. 
Glenn has an impeccable reputation, so let's not dump on an honest mistake. Jeez. Ryan writes, I worked at a local TV station for about 10 years. I saw many prompter read fails. Looks like a prompter read fuck up. When when you're reading a prompter, most times you aren't even processing what you're reading. Just keeping the pace going and making sure you're presentable. If he was reading, he was clueless that he did it. No fucking way. I've read a prompter. I've read a lot of prompters too. Uh, and, and if I misspoke or if something was written poorly, I would, I would, uh, I could see saying it, but I couldn't understand the not realizing it. I, I don't accept that. No way. Um, yeah, this was a class. If that was the case, and this was a fucking uh, uh, go fuck yourself, San Diego, Ron Burgundy. But I don't think he was reading. I think he was just coming back. All right, uh, uh, Glenn, we're going to come back. Uh, you got 45 seconds to talk about what you did, and then we're going to get get into the keys of the game or whatever shit. A lot of these guys, they have that ability. You know, It's like, okay, six-minute segment. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. It's not like uh, uh, written down. It shouldn't be if they're worth anything. And I think this guy's been around the block about a hundred times. So I think he knows what the fuck he's doing. I don't get it, man. Uh, all is not lost though. The man who runs the Negro league. You see how uh, patiently I'm saying that. Can you imagine? Now look, if during this story, I happen to, to do that. This will be my last podcast and they will never find my body because I am in the best place to hide a body. Ah, fuck. Hang on. Another one of my backdrops just went down. We can't have that. It's really distracting. Hang on. Don't go anywhere. Improvise. Gotta improvise, baby. Uh, Kenny adds, actually, uh, Ryan writes, a real pro can make a prompter read look like an ad lib. Not saying what he did was right, just try- trying to provide some context. Shows like that are produced heavily, maybe. Uh, Kenny says, and we can give Maureen shit for what she said, but her immediate reaction is the difference here. This guy's lack of reaction is all the evidence needed. Chris says, nice poverty thumbtack curtains. Thank you. Chris says duct tape and blue tarps. We can, uh, we can, uh, I don't know. We can call that a Baldwin room works for grailing too. LOL. They're not tarps. Okay. They're sheets. It's either that, or you don't see me because you're blinded by the backlight. And he says, if he had thumbtacks, they wouldn't be falling. You're so right. You know, damn it. I wish I would have done that. Maybe I'll do that for tomorrow if I can locate some here, which I don't know that I can. Fuck it. Beggars can't be choosers. Doesn't matter. Let's focus on uh, this guy, Glenn Kuyper. You know it's bad when the whole world knows your name, you know? Um, No one should know who Glenn Kuyper is. The story is not done, though. He got some support from the guy who runs the uh, Negro League Baseball Museum. Negro League Baseball Museum. Negro. Negro League. Negro. Negro. You actually, if you think about the actual how your mouth goes, if you say those words... Knee, knee. You're, it's a different contortion. So the way the uh, the the nasty word uh, lays out, like your mouth. I'm not even going to attempt it. Uh, your 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 mouth makes a totally different uh, uh, set of um, contractions in order to make it happen. Negro, 
the Negro League Baseball Museum. Negro League Baseball Museum and -and so-and-so barbecue. When Glenn Kuyper walked into the Negro League Baseball Museum, he met Bob Kendrick. Bob's a black dude who runs the place. He was very happy to see Glenn Kuyper. He wrote this after Glenn Kuyper said that horrible thing on the radio. He said, I'm aware of the unfortunate slur made by Glenn Kuyper. I had welcomed Glenn to the NLBM. This guy doesn't even say it. He just calls it the NLBM yesterday. And no, he was genuinely excited to be here. Yeah, he was stoked because he knew he'd have an opportunity to drop the N-word on on, on the television. Uh, Bob wrote, the word is painful and has no place in our society. Well, that goes without saying. We know that. He says, and while I don't pretend to know Glenn's heart, I do know that my heart is one of forgiveness. I hope all you will find it in yourselves to do the same. Signed, Bob Kendrick, president of the Negro League Baseball Museum. So what he's saying there is, I don't know for sure what was in his heart, but I forgive him. Well, no, you can't forgive him. This is bullshit. Bob needs to say, uh, fire this dumb fuck. Uh, another person who's weighing is, uh, weighing in is an amazing old school pitcher. He's, uh, his name is Dave Stewart back in the day. And, uh, that guy was fucking lights out black guy. And, uh, he wrote Bob. He wrote to the guy who runs the Negro league baseball museum. He retweeted the tweet and wrote, Dave Stewart wrote, Bob, it could not have been said any better. I know Glenn. I've worked with him over the years. I believe it was an unfortunate mistake. He, as we all, deserve a second chance. So now this topsy-turvy world has the black guys supporting the white guys who drop the emphatic hard R N word while talking about the Negro league baseball museum. What the fuck? Wow. Tyler writes, can you imagine if someone tuned in for the first time to hear Eric repeating the word Negro with no context? Why do they even call it that? I mean, I know that back in the day, they called it the Negro League, but that's like an antiquated term that's uh, frowned upon, you know? I mean, like, uh, there's the Special Olympics. Well, early on, uh, if it was called like the Retard Games... They wouldn't be calling it the Retard Games Hall of Fame, would they? No. Uh, Ryan says, old white dudes shouldn't be allowed to talk about that content on broadcast television. I'm not sure I know what you mean. Tyler says, my wife thought I was saying something wrong when referring to the NLBM when I was telling her about this story the other day. Yeah, that's how that, that, that word's not good either. You got to change the whole fucking thing. It would be less offensive if it was black guy baseball hall of fame. You know, it's, it's a terrible name. You know how like uh, the NAACP, they don't actually, they just, they're known as the NAACP. You, you, You never hear someone say, hey, how you doing? I'm with the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. No one would ever dare say that. So I don't know about, that's all fucked. This whole thing is fucking fucked. 
The A's have suspended the guy. Uh, I think there's a uh, there's a whole story that goes with it from the uh, from the local TV station in uh, in Oakland. I think they're like covering it. Audio check, video check. Announcer Glenn Kuyper says he's sorry for using what sounds like a racial slur during tonight's game. Sounds like a racial slur. It's the most clear racial slur that's ever been said ever. The fuck are you talking about? A little bit earlier in the show, I said something didn't come out quite the way I wanted it to, um, and I just wanted to apologize if if it uh, if it sounded different than I meant it to be said. Oh. And, Thank you, Brock Meyer. I just wanted to apologize for that. Kuiper issued that apology during tonight's game in Kansas City. Earlier in the game, he used what sounds like a racial slur while making a reference to the... I love how they have to dance around it. You know, they no one really can, can come out. They can't even say he... When they're explaining the story, they should say Glenn Kuiper wanted to say, was supposed to say, Negro League Baseball Museum, but instead of saying Negro, he used... The N-word with a hard R rhymes with bigger. That's what they should have said. The Negro League Baseball Museum in that city. The museum honors black people who played in the league before the integration of Major League Baseball. He has also issued a statement tonight on the incident. The team tweeted this, quote, The language used by Glenn Kuyper during today's pregame broadcast is unacceptable. The Oakland Athletics do not condone such language. We are working to address the situation. They should have uh, uh, brought in like three giant black guys and put the camera back on the booth. There's no field manual for finding the. And then everybody, and then they like whip his ass right there on fucking TV. Uh, who cut the cheese is late to the party, and this is too bad because that means I have to play it again. I will say this: when I listen back to it, as horrible as it was. I would be lying if I said I didn't laugh my fucking balls off. Okay? Holy shit. And, and laughing in like an awkward way like, oh, no! That type of laughing. Tyler said lost amongst this is that he announces for the A's games. There were probably only seven people that were viewing or listening when it happened. All right, I'm going to play it for you again because who cut the cheese got in here late. These idiot baseball announcers are getting ready to start the stupid game. Uh, uh, A dude in the light-colored shirt is talking about how he spent the day at the Negro League Baseball Museum and then went to the local barbecue joint. And this is how it sounded. We had a phenomenal day today. Negro League Museum... And Arthur Bryant's barbecue. We had a phenomenal day today. Nigger League Museum and Arthur Bryant's barbecue. It's not even close. I've listened to this probably 50 times now. And it's it's no shred of anything to make you think that this was in any way an accident. Stupid beard guy bumping his chest. Well, he says that really cracks me up. He's like, oh, the food was so good. And that museum. Oh, God, I really love that thing. Oh, shit. Oh, the intensity of that N-word. It's still, after every time I've heard it, it's blown my mind every fucking time. The A's have announced he's suspended indefinitely. He'll remain off of the air until a review of his on-air racial slur is completed. Oh, excuse me. It's done. Of course. How long does it take? I've reviewed it 50 times in front of you people. There's nothing more to review. Even if he had a doctor's note. That said, he just, he came down with, uh, he had a fucking mini stroke or something like that. It still doesn't work. No. 
He's been doing this since 06. It wasn't until the sixth inning that he delivered that apology. Now, at that point, it had already gone around the world five times. So he says it, and then it takes uh, a couple hours for him to get to that point, and everyone is aware of it, and he's probably just being brought up to speak. Do, 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 do. How would you? Um, I, I, I just wish I could have been a fly on the wall when someone came in. Hey, Glenn. Oh, you're not going to be happy. Do you realize what you just said? What are you talking about? And then he, he said it, and then he probably, like, beat the dude's ass who gave him the bad news. And then maybe you got a second. No, you did. You did say that. It, it wasn't even close. And then, you know, uh, uh, a great Odin's beard, he had to watch it back. He probably had to call it up on his phone to go to awful announcing to see that fucking shit. Motherfuck. Oh, my God. Uh, Ryan says, the more I see this clip, the more I can't stop fixating on ugly beard. In addition to the horrendous word uses, Kenny says, I'm surprised the beard guy didn't chime in with, yeah, N words make good food. (laughs) Oh my God. Okay. The only way that this could be more ridiculous. Oh, no, I, I, there is no way it could be more ridiculous. Um, the only thing that would be more mind blowing would be if someone just uh, flamed out and said, hey, by the way, I'm uh, starting the broadcast. I want you uh, to let you all know I've been a racist for years and I hate and then said it. Um, but that would just be like a, a hate filled moment. Um this is so mind boggling. I, I, I can't process it. Who cut the cheese late to the party with, is he related to Maureen? Yeah. You know, Maureen's way ahead of you. I think she dropped that joke. So yeah, I mean, it's understandable. You get here late, but uh, you got to understand all the jokes have been said and you guys have been killing it with the jokes, killing it. Right, and says, I love the idea of a squeaky voice teenager, Eric's impression, being asked to explain to him his N-word usage. You're a poop mouth. Remember that scene in uh, Anchorman? Everybody gets pissed at him because he tells San Diego to go fuck themselves. This this makes that look like a walk in the park, but it's actually, oops, it's actually real. Okay, don't go anywhere. I got to go pee. Holy fuck. I cannot believe that. All right. Whew. Boy, what a day. What a day. Um, all right. Where am I here? Get your get your shit together. I want to mention Berlin Speedway, Berlin Raceway. Uh, they got the racing in this past weekend. It was awesome. It was racing again this weekend. Go to berlinraceway.com and buy your tickets. You can get them online for next to nothing. I think the price might be going up to 17 bucks a ticket, or it's still 14 Uh, adult ticket. That's what you pay. It's more at the gate. So buy them in advance and go check out the racing at Berlin. The kids are free 15 and under free. You know, sometimes you go to a place and it's like five and under free 15 and under. I mean, those kids got pubes. Uh, they're like adults. I mean, if these kids 15 and under, uh, shot somebody, they'd be tried as adults, you know? Uh, 15 and under free parking free. You can bring in a cooler 12 by nine or smaller with as much food as you want as, uh, as much, uh, as many soft drinks or waters as you want. No glass and no alcohol. They serve the alcohol inside and get ready to experience the fun and excitement of local track racing. 
And uh, I tell you what, the thunder of the uh, or the noise sounds like thunder as they race by. I love that. I love that so much. Racing is great. I will be there for four or five races this year, and I want to see you. In fact, uh, in a month, I'll be out there. I think it's a month, pretty close to a month. I'll be out there. So uh, if you're planning on going to races, uh, save it for when I'm there. We can all hang out together, and we can hear uh, Kyler swear like an asshole and then be escorted out. I can't wait to talk to Kyler again because he's such a fuck when it comes to swearing in public. I, I, I hate it. I actually said to him last night, I go, dude, I am not going to hang out with you anymore if you continue this. There's people all around. He's swearing. I go like, and he's always showing pictures of us like his kids sporting events. It's like, dude, there is no fucking way you swear like that there. Jesus. Get your shit together, you dumbass. Uh, BerlinRaceway.com. Uh, the Dirty Donut Race. That's a uh, gravel bike race. That is coming. It's in uh, Martin, Michigan. It's uh, just under a month away. The Dirty Donut Race. If you're looking for something fun to do, maybe you uh, bike all the time. Maybe you're just never done it before. It's uh, There's a 10-miler for the newbies. 10-mile gravel race. It is Michigan's number one gravel race. There's a 10-miler, a 21-miler, a 41-miler, and a 61-miler. They call it the Dirty Donut Race because during the race, you just there's these donut stops, and uh, you eat a donut. For every donut you eat, you get five minutes off of your time, so that's hilarious and awesome. You can be a shitty guy, a shitty uh, rider, shitty guy, a shitty rider, and still beat the guy who would have won it, you know, because you ate so many fucking donuts. It's awesome. Uh, prizes. It's a great time. Fun time. After party. DirtyDonutRace.com. Use the code Zane23 at checkout to save 10 bucks. The Dirty Donut Race. I ran into, uh, Megan from Irvine yesterday at Meyer. It's been so good to see her. Uh, she was here for the first part of the show. People have been like, where is she? What happened? Did you piss her off? I go, no, I didn't. She's just busy, man. She's a mom. She is just going, going, going. Thank you, Megan. It was so good to see you. Uh, I, I see her. She goes, hey. I go, oh, my God. And uh, I grab my hot dogs. I come back. I didn't grab my hot dog. I grabbed my hot dogs that I bought for this trip. And uh, I, I go in for the hug. And she goes, oh, I stink. I stink. I go, I don't care. I love it. I love your musk. Give it to me, but I didn't detect any. I wanted, I wanted just a little, a little, uh, a little lady musk. I love it when ladies stink. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm all about it. I'm into a little bit of filth. Like if Diana, she's like, I'm like, hey, honey, uh, you wanna, you wanna roll around in the bed? She's, oh, I need a shower. I'm like, no, no, give me the funk. Give it to me. <laughs> That's about as revealing as I'll be. I don't want to, I don't, that, that's really stupid. I'm just kidding. She does, she doesn't stink. She would kick my ass if she found out I said that. Um, let's see. Bob says, you describing his behavior at the great food giveaway almost got me in trouble at work. Who? Who the fuck are we talking about now? Do some burpees, then immediately jump into bed with me. What are you talking about, Bob? What the fuck am I missing? All right. Uh, Meanwhile, Irvine's, as I was talking about, Megan, 616-516-5532. Wait a minute. 616-532-6600 is her number. When your vehicle fucks up, take it over there. 616-532-6600. For Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid, and EV. They'll do an amazing job fixing your vehicle. Thank you to them. Bob says the cursing. I don't know what you're talking about. I never swear. All right. Let's see. What do I want to talk about? Um, speaking of, um, black people, 
I know one person who would be in support of this. It would be the guy, Glenn Kuyper, the baseball announcer who said that terrible thing. He will be like, yes, I agree. I agree to this. The state of California is uh, has been talking since the murder of George Floyd. That's when this all came up. George Floyd was murdered by Derek Chauvin. And then people started talking about it. It's been, I've heard it mentioned before, but I didn't realize it was gaining steam. The state of California is considering giving every black person in the state $1.2 million. All of them. Now, I did a little uh, looking into it, and uh, uh, California is 39% Hispanic, 35% white. There's there's actually not a lot of black people in California. There's only about 2.5 million black people there. Um, and the massive sum, like each person were to get $1.2 million, would be distributed in payments over a lifetime, although that hasn't been finalized. And I don't think they have really any of this finalized but i'm just like would that mean like if a kid is born and is one day old when this becomes a law that kid uh would get one point okay let's say a kid is born black kids born and uh let's say he lives 80 years and he gets 1.2 million dollars i actually did the math that works out to fifteen thousand dollars a year or $288 a week for that person. Um, I mean, I, I don't, I'm, I'm struggling with uh, the math and, and how it would be dispersed. And if it's even the right thing to do. Now, I, I can't like say right now where I stand on it. I honestly, I thought about this a lot yesterday about, well, uh, hold on. Uh, I, I know that the average fucking white asshole is going to be like, oh, fuck those. No, fuck that. Fucking bullshit. We're not going to do Hang on. Hang on. It should be pointed out that um, the state of California, uh, they never were involved in any type of uh, slave trade. So that's interesting that they would even consider this. Uh, California is one of multiple states debating the feasibility of economic uh, reparations. That's the term. For black Americans whose ancestors were victimized by the Atlantic slave trade and its legacy. Um, I mean, I don't know. Does that if you are black, does that mean you you one million percent uh, come from an uh, a lineage that was a slave? Is that? Is that right? I mean, what if, uh, you know, uh, some guy, people immigrate from like Nigeria five years ago, or, or do you have to prove your lineage? Cause it says all black people. I, I don't know. California, of course, uh, frequently makes headlines for experimental progressive policies has recently reached an economic estimate. Uh, the uh, reparations task force is preparing to recommend that California apologize and issue down payments to black people as a way to make amends for slavery and discrimination. Although they, the state explicitly outlawed slavery when it joined the United States in 1850. So they, they, they joined the U S and said, you can't have a slave here. It's outlawed. Why do they have to apologize? I'm conf- I mean, I'm not saying don't do it. I'm not saying do do it. I'm saying, can you explain that to me? I would want to talk to black people about this and get like, I don't, I don't, I don't hang with a ton of black people, but I do know some. What do you think about this? What are your thoughts on it? I would like to ask them before I decided to weigh in on it, like an asshole. Imagine that in this one time, I am being very careful not to just say, fuck them. The task force created by state legislation signed by Governor Gavin Newsom 
In 2020, on Monday, published more than 500 pages of documents that indicated plans to recommend California issue a. F- I don't. I don't buy that. I, I'll. I'll go this far. What do you have to apologize for? He didn't do anything. California has to issue a formal apology for slavery and racism and consider payments of varying amounts to eligible black Californians. If California has to apologize, who never had slavery, what the fuck does Mississippi have to do? Suck everybody's dick? My God. Uh, The Chronicle suggested this massive number was merely a rough partial estimate of what it would cost the state to compensate black people for that legacy of harm, according to a draft of the task force's final report. Um, Yeah, I don't I don't know enough about this. I already feel like I'm in over my head. Um, But I mean, like uh, for Native Americans. Has this happened to Native Americans? Where they've been, uh, where reparations? I, I, I guess uh, I'm, I'm speaking out loud in hopes that uh, someone does know and passes that information along. I guess I'll look it up when I get done with this. But as I understand it, uh, Native Americans eventually, um, uh, you know, uh, I, I think there's something that's done. Uh, uh, free land is that? Is that what's what's happened? Uh, I know that a lot of uh, uh, reservations, when they um, when a tribe puts up a casino, all people of the lineage uh, receive uh, compensation because of the money made by the casino. Bob says what people forget is everyone was treated poorly throughout the history of this country. Well, yeah, but I'm not. No, that's not true at all. Everyone was treated poorly throughout the history of this country. I mean, I, I, if you looked at the way uh, the people that were involved in the slave trade were treated, uh, I, I, I think it would be, uh, you'd have to have an, an equal type of uh, discrimination and, 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 well, slavery and, uh, and, and murder in a lot of cases. Rape. There's a lot of unique questions coming out about this. Dr. Dre is worth $850 million and lives in California. Does he get $1.2 million also? Bob points out the Irish, the Chinese in the West building the railroads. Yeah, I know, but it's not like they were ripped from their homes and forced to be indentured servants. They came to the country. And found the work and were treated like shit. And even if that were true, like uh, tit for tat, you know, exactly the same. Well, then sure. But that doesn't mean everyone. You said everyone. Just because you throw out the Chinese and the Irish guys, that's not everyone. I'm not raising my hand saying, hey, I need some money. Now, I mean, if there were anything like... uh, You look at all the um, uh, Armenians that were slaughtered and their families were uh, destroyed and had to move. I mean, I would try to get reparations from the country of Turkey. And so would all the other Armenians. And there's not a lot of them. Do all the Jews get uh, reparations from Germany? I mean, I'm asking this uh, and I don't know. I mean, that that may be the case. Fuck. And what if, uh, what if, uh, let's just say this happens and it happens all around the United States. What if I do one of those uh, 23 and me and I find out that I'm a certain percentage of black guy? Do I then go, hey, give me some money? Uh, Joe makes a great point. The, uh, the Native Americans, the, the uh, Native American Indians and the Native uh, 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 Mexicans, uh, I don't even know if they're called native Mexicans. I think that everyone that was on this continent, the indigenous people were uh, the various tribes of native Americans and like um, uh, and the natives from each respective country, that portion of uh, North America, Central America and South America, the, the native Canadians, you know, 
that's who we're talking. Those are the ones who would, uh, I would, I would, I agree that there could be some type of uh, reparations, but not the fucking white guys. And again, I don't know about this. I don't know if this is even feasible. No, it's probably feasible. We've got so much money in this fucking country. It's unbelievable. All right. So, uh, off the top of my head, I'm not opposed to this. I but I need more information. And I actually I would like to talk to black people about it and and and, and give me a good reason why this should be and and what you think could be a reason why it shouldn't. Is that he hey, how do you break it down? What if what if a guy is just a little bit black? You know, like in the NBA, sometimes you see those white black guys. What's the guy's name? Used to play for the Pistons. Um, he's whiter than me, but he's a black guy. Blake, uh, what the fuck is his name? Blake Lewis? Something Blake. Tyler says it's time to assemble the Eric Zane Show podcast Black Caucus to get their thoughts. That's it. Blake Griffin. That guy was white as my fucking taint, but he was a black guy. That's enough about this. It's a lot of race in the show today. All right. Uh, something else that happened in baseball. A lot of a lot of race in baseball. A couple of uh, baseball pitchers. They're uh, getting ready to start the uh, the big game. It was uh, the Red Sox and the Phillies. And uh, the players line up on the uh, foul line from home to first. And, you know, hat off, national anthem. And uh, I guess there's some occasionally uh, players uh, want to be the last one to leave the field. It's superstition. And, uh, well, this happened. Boston Red Sox reliever Cutter Crawford and Philadelphia Phillies left-hander Matt Strom were on the field. The anthem finishes up, and the the teams go to their duck out, uh, their uh, dugouts, getting ready. All right, let's get get the game going, and they're still standing there, staring at each other, not moving. So, one guy smirks at the other one, and the time's passing. They're still just standing there, looking at each other. This is uh, this is how it looked. <laughs> and so the umpire goes, "Come on, let's go," and they're like, "No, we're we're not going to do it." And they're just standing there, and it's hilarious, and they're smiling and laughing, and like minutes are passing, and they won't get off the fucking field. So the ump goes, "Come on, let's go. I'm tired of fucking around. We got to get this game going." Um, the article says there have been standoffs in the past in multiple sports with players wanting to be the last one off the field court or ice following the anthem, which is just stupid. Uh, but with baseball's new pitch clock requirements, umpires had to eventually throw both of these guys out of the game. Threw them out! They were given a warning. They said, all right, I'm giving a warning that you'll be thrown out if you don't go back to your dugout. The one guy... From the Red Sox, Cutter Crawford is on the 15-day DL at the at the moment. And then, so he was uh, thrown out, and he's also, and they're both fined. And uh, his fine is going to be higher, I guess, because he was on the 15-day DL. I don't know why. Uh, but the other guy, uh, Strom, is, uh, is getting a fine, too. Fine, too. Red Sox manager Alex Cora said he'll be getting help from a certain teammate. I know there's a guy that went to the same school as him that's probably going to take care of that, he said, referring to Chris Sale. Because that guy's got a ton of money, I guess. I don't know. They all got tons of money. Who gives a fuck? Strom, who used to be a teammate with Crawford and the rest of the Red Sox, explained the situation to WEEI's Rob Bradford. Zero, Zero of it was planned, he said. Just Anthem was over, and I looked across, and Cutter kind of gave me a grin, and I knew exactly what that grin meant, so I stood there. 
if you know me, you know, competition is everything to me. So it kind of like, kind of felt like I was being called out right there. Looking back on it, probably not the wisest decision I've made in my big league career. It's unknown how much they're fined. You know, baseball sucks dick. When the only thing I'm interested in talking about is these two assholes standing there on the field or, or the uh, baseball announcer uh, saying uh, the N-word baseball, N-word league baseball museum or whatever the fuck. Uh, Cole said they should start every game by just throwing guys out. I think they should have just started the game. Do that. Start the game. That'll get them to move. Don't throw them out. Leave them there. Instruct the piss, uh, the pisser. Jesus. See, I did like a, uh, uh, that the baseball announcer, except I said pisser instead of pitcher. It can happen to anybody, right? Um, now if I started to say the N word, I would only get to the double G or one of the G's. And then I'd stop myself. That's that's how you know the difference. That the last two letters, if you go through with the end to say those last two letters as strongly as he did, you know, fuck me. All right. Whew. Uh, thank you very much. To key sponsor A and E Heating and Cooling, six one six five one six eighty five seventy nine. The Immortal Joe Martinez. Holy shit! Schedule your AC uh, tune up now. Okay, now he's he's take. I mean, you got a call and you don't want to trust me. You don't want to flip that thing on without getting it tuned up. So get on it. Six one six five one six eighty five seventy nine. Pay the seventy nine bucks. Get that thing cleaned out. The outside. He's gonna take that cover off that thing with the fan on top outside of your home. It's gonna be loaded with all that uh, uh, shit that comes off of the dandelions when they all float through the air and debris and dust. It's gonna be like a uh, nineteen seventy five Bush on a Playboy Playmate. Uh, and he's going to clean that all off. That's going to improve the efficiency. Easier to get air through. It's not all that shit stuck on the fins. Air gets through quicker and with less work on the AC unit, and uh, which means it runs more efficiently and doesn't damage. Uh, less chance of damaging the unit because of wear and tear. You know, you got to do this. You got to see Joe twice a year. Furnace tune-up, AC tune-up. This is not negotiable. When he first tuned mine up, it had been years. He was like, I don't know how the fuck. You, you were able to keep this from breaking down. Jesus, 616-532. Damn it. 616-516-8579 for A&E Heating and Cooling. Uh, the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage reminds you that if you want that mortgage now, uh, call him, 231-332-6505. You're going to get a little bit lower of a rate if you go on the 15-year deal, but the rate still kind of sucks. It's not a 1981 rate, but it's still shitty. Uh, but you want the house, get the house, refinance in 18 months. You're going to save yourself a ton of money. Thank you to the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage. Or if you owe a bunch of money on a credit card, okay, if you owe 20 grand on a credit card, you're paying 500 bucks a month in interest. Fuck that. Get the money out of your home, pay off the balance, and then pay on the 7%. All right. And you can even spread that out over 30 years if you like, and you barely notice it, man. Okay. Get out of that. If you got a home already, get out of that fucking hole. You dumbass. 231 332 6505 for the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage. Finally, the Kent County Health Department. Thank you so much for being on board with the show. My God. If you or your little ones, I'm sorry, if your little ones or your friends or family's little ones are not fully vaccinated, like with the measles vaccination, mumps, rubella, whooping cough, pertussis, uh, now is the time. Reach out to the Kent County Health Department at 616-632-7200 and get this done. You can get the vaccinations for little or no cost. So again, it might not be you, but it might be someone you know or love. 616 616- 632 7200
Uh, all right. Cannot believe I got this show under my belt the way the day started. I'm not kidding you. I thought my life was over. I was in such, I was so upset. Fuck me. I still feel fucked up. I'm surprised that the only reason why, uh, the only reason why I was able to get this show done today is because I'm so excellent. It's the only way. <laughs> and humble. All right. Um, I got to commit the guy's name to memory. Your asshole of the day. Today. Brought to you by TC Paintball. I I mean, if Glenn Kuyper and the beard dude didn't do it, hap- weren't involved in what happened, it would have been O'Neal. Uh, but it's not. It's Glenn Kuyper and the beard dude. Assholes of the day. Brought to you by TC Paintball. Whew. That is my time. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Uh, if you if you haven't checked out the show in a while, and uh, and and you're you're back, I know that there was a couple of people talking about that on the Freeburn Hot Wings subreddit. I appreciate you trying it again, and um, you know some of those folks are pissed off at me still um, because of uh, the trolling, and and well, not so much the trolling. It had to do with um, when I talked about. Any old Joe, which, you know, uh, we know how that turned out. I was very bullish on my stance on that. And um, a lot of those folks had the idea that uh, I did that just so I could uh, get attention. And um, it very very much seems like that. And that's, that's hard to talk your way out of. I, I get it. I understand why you would think that. Uh, but don't forget from my standpoint, um, I was the only person that would listen, um, to several women who reached out to me. I, you wouldn't believe what the fuck they went through. These people who had something bad happen to them from someone. I have to be very careful how I describe this because I don't want to get fucking sued. But, um, and it turns out where there was smoke, there was fire to be sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching the show. I'll talk to you down the road. Bye-bye.